Good morning, everyone. So, we had a nice surprise as we drove up to the Hotel Island. Wood Bison is open. They changed the um, Texas gate into a just a simple gravel culvert. And then, yeah, you just drive in and so we're probably not going to do the whole trail, but we are going to wander around. So we'll see what we can see. The first thing I saw were some mouse footprints in the thin layer of snow. On the trail, the summer flowers had faded and dried up to disperse their seeds. And we found a tree that had fallen tree. in an impressive so, style. The two tree branches just split it right in half. It was amazing how the tree looked like it had been split into firewood. Some bright red rose hips decorated the trail edges. After over a year of being closed, it must have taken a fair bit of work to get the trail back into a hikeable condition. Claims that the trail has not been used for the summer. The nest pretty, pretty close to the edge of the trail here. Thank you to the moose for clearing out the brush, making it easier to see the marsh. The twig eaters, or moose, tend to eat to a comfortable height for them and trim the brush to an even height. A layer of frost covered the boardwalks that go through the marshy areas. visible. Actually very visible in this section. For the first kilometer or two of the hike, the highway traffic is very audible, but it gives a good indication of when you're almost done the loop. Dried thistles danced in the breeze. So did the grasses in the golden sunlight. Footprints in the fresh snow marked the passage of a squirrel. And a sausage-like cattail wobbled on a long stem. We reached the big field, and just moments after Lyndon and I both declared that the area was empty, we rounded the bend and saw them. Wood bison, a herd of about 20 of them, grazing on the dry grasses. The small amount of snow wasn't enough to hamper their ability to eat, and they grazed in the morning sunlight. The light shone on their thick coats, highlighting their fur with light brown colors. It was an amazing few minutes watching them as they moved along, looking for the best grasses. We were also far enough away that they didn't notice us for a while. One of the bison had a tracking collar on them. The park monitors the movements of the bison around the park and the visitor center has a map of hot spots where the bison like to be, for both the south side and the north side. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, the south side is home to the wood bison, a subspecies of the American bison. The wood bison, like their name suggests, live in more wooded lands, but they still graze in open clearings. Their current numbers are estimated at around 2,500 individuals and they are larger than the plains bison. It's theorized the large body size allows them to have more room to store fat for the winter months. These bison also slow their metabolism down during the winter, allowing them to absorb more nutrients from their food, as well as to get by with less food overall. 
Slowing digestion down also allows them to generate more heat to maintain their body temperature. Here's a view of how far away we were. The general rule of thumb is to hold your arm up at a full length. If you can cover the bison with your thumb, then you are likely at a safe distance. Wood bison can run at up to 34 miles per hour, or 54 kilometers per hour, but usually at a more leisurely pace of around 25 miles per hour, or 40 kilometers an hour. Both speeds are much faster than most people on foot. It was also fascinating to see them realize that people were watching them. They raised their heads to watch us in between mouthfuls of food, and their tails were held out a little. An erect or vertically held tail is a warning sign that the bison is getting agitated. After a few minutes, the entire herd turned in unison and walked calmly into the forest. It was amazing to see them disappear. This was also a little bit of a relief, as in front of them was the trail and boardwalk, so if we had wanted to continue on, we would have had to go through the field. I was also worried that someone might have come along in the opposite direction, and they would have ended up much too close to the herd. We decided to return back the way we came, keeping an eye out in case the bison's trail crossed paths with ours. Holy crap, that plane is noisy. We heard a noisy plane and then spotted it in the sky. That's four engine, I suppose. Is it from the base? By the base. I am referring to the Canadian Forces base, Wainwright, which is nearby. 
Along the route back, I caught Lyndon struggling to get his camera out. Winter is challenging, as you want to keep your mitts on, but you still want to film things. In this case, we had spotted a number of frilly mushrooms on a tree. We passed by the marsh again. The angle of light had changed and lit up the snow-covered ice like a mirror. We also had one more special encounter. We startled two moose that were in the clearing. They moved into the brush and sought to keep an eye on us. It took me a moment to find the right angle to see them at. I love those big saucer-like ears tuned in to listen to any sounds created by us. She turned away and then looked at us over the other shoulder. We slowly and cautiously made our way along the trail, which fortunately, or unfortunately, curved around where the moose were standing. We kept an eye on her as we went, as we didn't really want to end the hike with being trampled. She just turned her head to look at her companion, which we guessed was a yearling moose as they were a bit smaller than her. We followed our trail to a wildlife trail that crossed ours. Unfortunately, Lyndon missed the moment with a camera malfunction. Still, it gave some great memories. As always, thanks for watching.